Good morning and welcome to Tuesday Morning Chapel. Uh, I'm kind of going a bit fast because I've only got about 10 seconds before I go over my time limit. But first, uh, we're going to watch Mr. Jones part two. Second, Miss Emily Burns will be singing to us. Enjoy. In 2005, you were playing in the ashes, of which the BBC was reported that this series was hailed as the most thrilling series ever, which I, I personally watched it and, it and it was. And um, you have to correct me, but there was a moment in um, the second match where I think Australia just needed three runs to win, and if they won that, they'd be two, two up, wouldn't they? Yeah. Right? Who was the batsman? Who, who... No, Michael Kaspervich. Uh, Kaspervich, I think mm. I pronounced it. Anyway. anyway, he's clipped it, and that ball's coming to you. Now, how did you feel? Because, you know, the whole of England was sort of the weight of England. Our mm. expectations were all on you at that moment. You know, what was going through your mind? If you drop it... <laughs> yeah, well, that's that was definitely there, but... I suppose in the lead up, okay. I kept, I kept telling myself that there would be one more opportunity for us to win this Test match, and more than likely that I would, that the ball would come to me because of the nature of the because game. Because the wicket keeper. Because the wicket keeper. So I kept telling myself as it got closer and closer, there will still be one opportunity, and you're going to be the person that opportunity comes to. So be ready for it. Gosh, even though it was, it was look, if you looked at the stadium, all the English were pretty much thinking this is. It. Well, we all thought it was. Over. Yeah, yeah. Everyone that morning, yeah, it should have been. But um, it's the nature of sport is incredible, and it's, it's the only thing I'll be remembered for is that yeah. one catch. You know, and that's fine. <laughs> there was so much pressure on you, though. How how did you handle that pressure? One pressure is about um, your preparation. So if you, th- you relate it to exams, exams, massive pressure, isn't it? Yeah. And a lot of that pressure is the unknown. Yeah. You know, what you're coming up against, what questions there's, there's going to be, what, uh, you know, so that's the main thing for an exam, isn't it? What's the question going to ask? Do I have the answer for it? Yeah. Am I, a- but in that moment, it's where all the training comes into it. And if I know that, and that's why I, I was a hard trainer, you know, I, I, I trained really hard because what I needed to build up was trust in myself. Right. And you so, got the ability to, to carry yeah, this off. Yeah. I knew I had the physical ability, but what I had, and that's the biggest thing again when it comes to, I think, to doing well in exams is, is you need to trust yourself. And in order to trust yourself, you have to know that you've done the work leading up to it. Obviously, being a professional cricketer, Yep. You know, you're in the media a lot, um, and the media are quite fickle, you know, they're, so they're kind of watching all anything good or anything bad you do. How, how did you, I mean, I don't know if you, did you have much, I mean, how did you handle any criticism that they... It was hard. You know, yeah, a lot, I remember playing matches where um, the, the media would be scrutinizing really heavily what I'd done because I, I dropped quite a few catches. I'd, you know, hold my hand up the yeah, I yeah. wasn't, uh, I wasn't as consistent as I would have liked to have been. And, and because of that, it gave the press stuff to write about. Yeah. And that did keep me awake at night. Oh. Where And so I lost a lot of hours of sleep because it's just that natural playing it over in your mind. And, and I think by the, you know, and it took its toll, absolutely. Winning the Ashes was a historic moment for us in England. And what, can you show us? Uh... Uh, well, I've, yeah, so I was lucky enough what they did on the back of Winning the Ashes, um, we got awarded MBEs. The request from Her Majesty to uh, to go and be presented with, yeah, an MBE, which is a member of the British wow. Empire. I got it out of the, my bedside drawer, and it was at the back to uh, <laughs> to bring it in. But it needs it needs a polish. But um, whoa! But yeah, you can. It's impressive. I don't get anything. So people ask me, do I get any money for anything? Do I get paid for it? Do, what, what can I do with my MBE? Nothing. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no, that's the thing. It doesn't come with any riches or anything like that. It's just a, um, yeah, an, an honorary award, which um, is pretty special. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. How would you advise someone who you were seeking a professional career in sport? I think any career, like, you know, is that you have to be dedicated towards it. You know, I, I can remember spending hours on my own practicing. And so, yeah, you have, dedication is absolutely has to be there. And with that dedication, some sacrifice.
because if you're not you know you need to be willing to give something up in order to be the best that you can yeah so that, that was the one thing with and with being sport really lucky that i love playing sport and i knew i wanted to be the best and i was willing to to do all those hours and sacrifice so it was it was quite an easy win for me but um but with anything with you know gcse res- results yeah you know your a levels people don't give it to you you've got to you've got to work and you've got to earn it yeah and when you do that it means so much more yeah so actually you put that hard work in and knowing that you're the person that's done all that work and so um so yeah so that's there's no easy route to to being the best yeah you've got and it's there's it's hard work and you've got to be prepared to do it we all you know there's a lot of people who would love love to be professional sports but um very few make it because of what you have to have to be willing to sacrifice gosh thank you very much for your time mr jones that's okay cheers thanks a lot (laughs) 